that's good. Let's everybody take a hymnal. Page 125, Joy to the World, as we stand. Maybe I want you to step up here and pray with us if you will. We're glad you're here. We welcome all of you today to Mountain View Baptist Church. We have visitors uh, scattered in the congregation, and we would like for you to know you're the honored guest here. Thank you for being at our church this morning, all right? Brother Dennis is going to come pray with us, and uh, we'll go right on with the service, all right? Brother, God bless you. You pray with us, all right? Thank you, sir. My Heavenly Father, the Lord, as we bow here this morning, we want to thank you for letting us come back to your house. Lord, we want to thank you for every person here, Lord, our church members. Lord, we pray that you bless them and take care of them through these holidays. Lord, keep us all well and safe. Lord, we pray that you would just help us, Lord, if we got somebody lost in here this morning, that you'd save them. Lord, I pray that you'd open their heart and their eyes, Lord, where they can see. Father, I pray that you'd just help us to be a Christian, Lord, where others can see us in you. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to worship you this morning. We don't come for no other reason but love you and to worship you. Lord, we pray that you'll help in the singing, the preaching, the praying, Lord. We pray that you'll just bless us all and give us a great service and help us to love you more each day. Lord, now take care of us. We'll love you and give your name to go and to praise. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Dennis. You may be seated all over the building. Again, let me take this opportunity to thank you for coming on this Sunday morning, and we have sickness everywhere. I mean, a lot of little children are not well, and so therefore the parents are at home today keeping the little children, so I hope and pray that uh, all the sickness will soon be passed, all right? And uh, I want to remind you of the service tonight at 6 p.m. Love to have you tonight, each and every one of you, and then Wednesday night at 7.30. And if you'll look at the bulletin, you'll realize on a uh, Christmas night of the 25th, We'll not have service during the middle of the week, but all the other services we will have, the Lord willing, all right? I want to also welcome uh, Bryce and Morgan back home. God bless you. So glad, so good to see you. Uh, they were married the other week, had another wedding yesterday here in the church. Uh, Brandon and Daphne, they're gone and uh, on in route to the honeymoon, but uh, we're glad Bryce and Morgan is uh, home safely and back with us today. Let's have the ushers come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and the regular offering. And I'd like to read this card. It's from Miss Anna Leone. It said, Dear Mountain View Baptist Church, I want to thank our Father in Heaven for this chance that I have to express my sincere appreciation of the church. The Christmas mission project toward the Venezuelan people was a success because many of you came forward to donate and made it possible. Thank you for all, thank you all for a compassionate heart towards missions. May God bless you beyond measure. Miss sincerely, Miss Anna Leone, as Brother Randy indicated, the clothes were shipped and already arrived in Colombia, and they already are making preparations to open all them, disperse them between all the children. And even as of this morning, I had another person come in my office and want to give money for the shipping and the freight, and I said, it's already taken care of. Uh, the original freight bill was 1,850 or so and some change, and all of that's came in, plus some extra. So we'll let you know what we're gonna do with the extra. I think there's gonna be two or three, maybe $400 extra. We'll let you know what we're going to do with that because a lot of you, well, most of you gave it all, and we appreciate it very, very much. Want to be accountable and let you know what's happening to the money, all right? God bless you. The usher is going to serve you. The choir is going to sing. You worship in your giving this morning, all right?
Brother Jordan, step up here and pray with us, all right? I notice your wife's not here, so you got somebody sick at home too? A lot of sickness, all right? We're going to let him pray and ask the blessing on the offering. Listen, to the, the, the Christmas card stuff, uh, they're getting all full, so we're glad. And, and the deals help out with all that. And so all your Christmas cards, the congregation, you put them in these boxes, and you save a whole lot of postage, all right? So uh, keep all that in mind, and we'll greatly appreciate it. Jonathan, pray with us, and pray for God will help all the sick in the church. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for the wonderful Sunday morning you've given us. Um, I pray that for all those that are sick weren't able to be here this morning. Um, please bless this offering to the further of your gospel, Lord, and um, help us to have a wonderful service this morning. Amen. Grace would abound, and there's no need to doubt it now, or he'll make a way somehow. Safely, oh, this far Jesus has brought me, no need to doubt it now. Child of God, have no fear, though your past seems unclear. Someday, God's plan will unfold. Oh, he has never, never failed. He will always prevail for the Lord. It's still in command. And there's no A hymnal page 145 will come all you faithful as we stand and choir come down on the land. Oh. 
So let's make them feel welcome, all right? are interested in the uh, winter youth meeting, that meeting is January 24th and the 25th. Sign up by January 15th. See Ashley and Nathan for any details. This is where Brother Mark Stroud is the pastor at the Wahoo Baptist Church. And I want you to go ahead. We're told you we're already making preparations for next year. I believe it's sisters April 19th. Is that right? April 19th. Listen, right, go ahead and write that down. We've already got the sheriff booked, okay? Write that down, April 19th, that's a Sunday morning. We're gonna have a big, big law enforcement uh, of appreciation, recognition day. Firemen, highway patrol, uh, city police, sheriff. We're gonna feed them, maybe give gifts, recognize them. Let Sheriff Chuck Wright give his testimony. So uh, nobody can go out of town, no vacations in April. Everybody's gonna be here, all right? Write that down, I want you to write it down. We're gonna make a big, big, big day out of it and recognize some people, all right? This is our first trio. You worship with them while they sing, all right? Sing it out. <laughs> down a memory's lane of path so long ago old Satan came right by my side making me feel low he brought up thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray he was trying to discourage me as I walked along my way he said you're undeserving cause i know where you've been i have a record of your life 
when you were bound by sin. And I know your darkest secrets, things that you would never tell. What makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? I heard the old accuser. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags. My goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I can say to what you said to me. It's under the blood. Oh, praise his dear name. by sin and shame it's already gone i'm happy reminding him it's under the blood now victory was given me when i was born again he washed my stain and sinful past and he gave new life within no longer do I bear the marks that sin had brought my way. With happiness and peace of mind, praise God I now can say. It's under the blood, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be, my life's been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the by sin and shame it's already gone i'm happy reminding him it's under the blood i'm happy reminding him it's under the today and songs like this doesn't touch your heart in some fashion, some manner, and you can't identify, can't recognize, you know, don't have that experience, could I tell you that there's nothing greater in all the world than having your sins put under the blood? Absolutely nothing better, friend. Nothing better. I said all that to say this. If you're not a believer, you ought to really think about becoming one today. Today, amen. All right, one more trio. Let me recognize the fact that uh, the Lord's been good to some people uh, this week. Brother Richard Camp had surgery. He's recovering. Johnny Carter had surgery. He's here. Uh, Malachi has been in the hospital. He's here. And so we thank the Lord. Uh, Brother Gibson, let's see, had recent surgery. And Brother Rick, recent surgery. Tomorrow, William Stone's surgery. So I'll probably miss somebody, but glad the Lord's helping some people to get better. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Hey, God's good. Amen. Amen. And can I tell you this? If I was in the hospital this morning and I see you, guess what? He'd still be good. He'd still be yeah. good. Amen. Yeah. Brother Perry's dad come out of the pavilion. Isn't that good? When you get in the pavilion, you're probably not long for this world. But he come out of the pavilion, got put in the heart center. So uh, that's a plus. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Pray for all these things. Worship, say amen to these singers. All right.
There was love at the cross where Jesus suffered pain. There was power in the blood that flowed from his veins. And there was joy at his presence when he rose from the tomb. There was life everlasting when he died for me and you. Love unspeakable and pain unbearable, forgiveness undescribable, and he did it all for me. Peace unexplainable and joy uncontainable, a witness unrestrainable when Jesus saved me. There was shouting in heaven when I knelt right down there in prayer. Oh, and I called upon Jesus, and he saved me there. And there was singing in glory when my name was written down. In the book of eternal ages, it will ever be. My name unerasable, my life unendable, my sins are in the deepest sea. Peace unexplainable and joy uncontainable, a witness unrestrainable when Jesus saved me. Well, my my name unerasable, my life unendable, my sins are in the deepest sea. Peace unexplainable and joy uncontainable, a witness unrestrainable when Jesus saved me. And joy uncontainable, a witness unrestrainable when Jesus saved me. Amen, amen, amen. It's crazy. A lot happened when we got saved. Amen, brother Adair, brother Adair, a lot happened when we got saved. Amen. My name's unerasable. I like that. Take your Bible, everybody, and go to Revelation 2, please. Revelation chapter 2. We'll get into the message, God being our helper today. I covered your prayers, and thank you for praying for us. Thank you for praying for these that are not well. I'm excited about next year. We're not going to do sowers and reapers like we've been doing for seven or eight and maybe nine years, seven or eight. We're going to do something different. We're going to have a large outreach for the law enforcement day. We're going to have a large 4th of July community, community invite, feed the community, fireworks, uh, feed everybody on the ball field, try to reach our area right here. We're going to do a, uh, well, I'm excited about this, and we're going to do a wild game, fish, uh, fish, hunt, kill, shoot, some kind of wild game. Probably get Brother Hank Parker, Brother Hank Parker up here. I've already talked to him a while back, so uh, we're excited about it. Say, so, well, you're going to have a bunch of rednecks. We love rednecks. Amen. We love rednecks. If it runs on four legs, I say shoot it. Say amen. That's exactly right. <laughs> amen. Or if it, if it swims in the ocean or the lake, catch it. Amen. And by the way, if you catch it, clean it and eat it. And if you shoot it, clean it and eat it. Amen. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try to do something different, Brother Brian, to reach out. God, I feel it in my heart. I want to do it. I want to do it. Brother Andy, reach out and invite any and everybody and push those really, really, really big days, Brother Ben, and hopefully and prayerfully let folks know that the old-fashioned Baptist church loves people, amen. That's it. I want to let people know that the old-fashioned Baptist church still loves everybody, amen. All right, Revelation chapter 2, verse number 1, very familiar passage of Scripture, under the angel of the church of Ephesus write, 
These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst, I love that, of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Verse 5, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come, I will come unto thee quickly, and, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Please, if you will, direct your good attention to verse number 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. We're going to be dealing with that, leaving our first love. I'm going to try to hurry because I have a specific area that, Brother Nathan, I'd like to get to. I want you to notice verse 1. I want to say a word about the assembly. Look in verse number 1. Under the angel of the church of Ephesus write. The church of Ephesus, we know, was a local church, but is also representative of the spiritually strong apostolic church of the first century. The spiritually strong apostolic church of the first century. So that's who he's writing to, the church of the first century. Not only the assembly, but I'd like to direct your attention to the author. That's also found in verse number one. The Bible says, These say, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Who is the author? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Two things I want to say, Brother Ben. He holdeth and he walketh. I like it. He holdeth the seven stars, Brother Iverson, and he walketh. And by the way, he's still walking, amen, in the midst of the church. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I want him here. I welcome him here. We need him to be here. I appreciate you walking amongst the church, but I'd rather have him. Amen. And the Bible said not only does he hold the messengers, the seven stars, the angels, but he also walketh in the midst of the church. And so that's the author. But look at the approval that he gave the church of Ephesus. Look at their sacrificial service in verse number two. I know thy works and thy labor. This was not a lazy church. This was not an indolent church. This was not a slack church. He said, I know your labor and I know your service. And so we see their sacrificial service. But look at verse 2 again. He said, and how thou, when thy patience, look at verse 3, hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Uh, in other words, he had a lot of things that were plus and a lot of things that were positive and a lot of things, Brother Galloway, that he could commend about this church. Not only their sacrificial service, but their steadfastness. Thank God for their steadfastness, their patience, they bore, they, they bore up under the persecution, under the trial, under the opposition, and under all the false teaching that was rampant in that day. Their sacrificial steadfastness. Thank God for it, but I also he commended them and approved them for their suppression of evil, their suppression of evil. Look, if you will, in verse number two again, I'm trying to hurry. He said, and thou canst not bear them which are evil, and you've tried them which say they are apostles and are not, 
I just found them liars. You know what I wish? I wish, Brother David, that characteristic would return to the churches of this generation. In other words, they, they, uh, they put to the doctrinal test, Brother Trey, those that claim to be apostles and claim to be teachers of the Word of God. And, Brother Ben, they found them to be liars. How do you find somebody to be a liar? I'll tell you how. You hold up the clear and adulterated teaching, Brother Dean, of the Word of God, and if a Bible teacher, if a so-called apostle, if an elder, if a bishop, if a pastor, if you don't line up with this book right here, he's a false teacher, amen. And so this early apostolic church, I'm trying to get to my main message, all right? They were, they were, they were commended, they were approved for their suppression of evil. But look in verse number 6, and this is an hour's worth of preaching right here. Look in verse number 6, everybody. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which also I hate. You know what, Brother, uh, Brother Ivis, sir? Not only did the church of Ephesus hate this, but the Lord hated this. What was it, Brother Kyle? The deeds of the Nicolaitans. Without giving you an hour's worth of preaching, I'll tell you what it was. Uh, it, was a, it was a religious sect, all right, that divided the believers into the clergy and the laity. You know where this is going, all right? In other words, they set up the religious dignitary over the people. And can I tell you something? It was wrong back then and it's wrong now. Uh, if all of us took another hour and studied all this out, well, you know what we'd find? Don't get mad at me now. We'd probably find the very roots of the great whore of the book of Revelation. I wish I had a Bible reader up here. Say, who in the world is the great whore of the book? By the way, that's a Bible word of the book of Revelation. Hold up, friend. Hold on. The Roman, the Roman Catholic false religion. I said the Roman Catholic false religion that sets up bishops and archbishops. Is everybody okay? And popes and priests are to preside over the people. That's the deeds of the Nicolaitans. That's the lifestyle of the Nicolaitans. I to divide the clergy versus the people. And God never instituted it that way. And that's what God said. He said, I hate it, but thank God the church of Ephesus hated it. Amen. I, I know we got a lot of visitors here. So you know what, Brother David, I probably better go ahead and clear an acre of ground, all right? I just better clear an acre of ground. This church, this church, by the help and grace of God, for all these years, has not only not believed in false doctrine, but we've denounced it, amen? We've denounced it. And I know you may think I'm judging, and you know, I feel it. I feel it all the way up here. And you think I'm being critical, and you think I'm being harsh, you think I'm being egotistical or I, I'm, I'm swelled up? I am not. I hear my message today. If it lines up with this book right here, go with it, all right? I said go with it. But I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what denomination it is. It doesn't matter what religion it is. It doesn't matter what affiliation somebody is. If it doesn't line up with this book right here, and they are contradicting the clear teaching of the Word of God, and it doesn't matter whose relatives involved in it. I said it doesn't matter whose relatives involved in it. I'm talking about doctrine, all right? I'm talking about doctrine. And thank God I do believe in Baptist doctrine. And I believe Baptist doctrine is close to the the Bible as anything on, on planet earth and I thank God I'm a Christian by grace but thank God I'm a Baptist by choice amen and again I don't want to get into an hour's worth of preaching about the deeds of the Nicolaity but study it all out and they divided the clergy against the laity and set up religious dignitaries over the people and that sounds exactly what the false system of Roman Catholicism does today and now by the way let me tell you I'm just going to preach some things alright there's no hope in the Pope alright I said there's no hope in the Pope alright 
and I don't, I'm glad I don't have to go to a man and confess my sins to a man I, when I, I myself am a man. Brother Dom, God bless you. Good to have you all the way from Pickens, South Carolina. A man can't forgive my sins. A man can't give forgiveness for me. I don't have to have a mediator. I've got a heavenly mediator. I've got an advocate, thank God. I've got an intercessor. I've got a go-between. Thank God I've got a great high priest, amen. I'm glad I've got access to God. I'm glad that you've got access to God. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I'm not afraid to preach this book right here. I want to tell you one more time that the Roman Catholic system is the great whore of the book of Revelation. And you, you, you do well to stay away from it. I try. You say, well, I, I, I can't take all day. You do well to stay away from it, all right? So we look at the approval that God gave the church of Ephesus. We look at their sacrificial service. We look at their steadfastness. We look at their suppression of evil. We look at Brother Lott, Dr. Lott, their spiritual discernment. He said, you've tried them. you found them to be liars. Their spiritual discernment. We look at their stand against the Nicolaity. That's found in verse number six. But not only, not only do we see uh, the assembly, the author, and then the approval, but then I want to tell you, there's an accusation or there's an admonition and it's found in verse number four nevertheless uh, pay attention to that word right there nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love not lost but left amen uh, we cannot lose our salvation uh, we cannot fall from grace I said we cannot fall from grace I uh, was once saved always saved I uh, thank God for eternal security that's another Bible doctrine. I said, thank God for eternal security. But as sure as you're in this meeting house, uh, this beautifully decorated sanctuary on this Sunday morning, as sure as you're saved by the grace of God, you may not lose your salvation, but it is possible. I said, it is possible. It is well not possible uh, for us to drift away and leave our first love. That's the admonition. That's the accusation. Look at the appeal. Look at the appeal, verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. I didn't realize this. Well, I did sort of, but I never really put it together. But you know why? You'll never have first works without a first love. Somebody help me. I said, you'll never have first works, Brother Josiah, without a first love. Some of that went right over y'all's head. I said, you'll never have the first words until, first of all, you have the first love. I so thank God for the privilege. Thank God for the opportunity. Thank God for the blessing of having a fervency, of having a passion, of having a heartfelt love for our Savior. Amen. Look at the appeal in verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first words. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. Look at the awful end. You know what the Lord said? If we don't remember, if we don't repent, if we don't repeat the first words, he said, I can come and I'll remove your witness. I'll take the light and it will no longer burn and shine as a testimony to Jesus Christ and his gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe a child of God can get to the place. I want you to know I believe a child of God, Brother Stewart, I can get to the place where the Lord will bring chastisement and chastisement in the form of the Perry of letting your light no longer shine. I will move your candlestick. He's not talking about taking our salvation. Miss Lee, he's not talking about uh, banishing us into purgatory or hell, no such place as a purgatory, amen. Uh, but I tell you what he is talking about, our suspension of our influence, our suspension of our influence, our loss of our light, somebody help me, our loss of our testimony, our loss of our influence. He said if you don't remember, if you don't repent, if you don't repeat the first word, I'll come remove your candlestick. God help us, that's the awful end. I want you to look in verse number four, everybody, 
And for those that are listening, I hope you everybody's listening. But look in verse number four. What a great many wonderful things, Miss Tiffany, he had to say about the church of Ephesus. Amen. Brother Nathan Jackson, he had wonderful things and good things. And by the way, he wasn't just shooting them a line, Brother Robbie. He wasn't just wasting words right there. He was approving them. He was commending them. He was uh, congratulating them. Hey, you know what, Brother Nathan? He was thanking God for their stand, thanking God for their opposition to false religion. Thanking God for their opposition under the deeds of the Nicolaites. He said, I appreciate your steadfastness. I appreciate your labor. I appreciate your worth. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your suppression of evil. I appreciate your stand against the Nicolaites. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. He said, you've left your first love. You've left your first love. Now, I want to talk to you about that a minute. This is no minor matter. This is no small matter. When you're talking about leaving your first love, you say, well, can you identify it? Can you, def can, can, can you define it? Can you explain it? Brother Chris, most people that I've read after and most people that I've ever talked to or heard preach believe that that first love experience is the love that you and I have in the days and months immediately following our conversion to Jesus Christ. Our conversion to Jesus Christ. And that's why he said, remember. And I'd like for some of you right now, right now, I'd like for you to remember. I'd like for you to remember that honeymoon experience that honeymoon experience. I'd like for you to remember the fervency of love that filled your soul and filled your spirit. I'd like for you to remember how, uh, how, how much you enjoyed serving God. I'd like for you to remember how often you sought God in prayer. I'd like for you to remember how there was no book like this book that's ever been given to man, and you couldn't get enough of it. I'd like for you to remember at the time span between commitment of sin and confession. You know how quick it was? I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. You lived and, and I lived, and we all lived to such a degree that when the very thought would cross our mind, that we wouldn't even commit the wrong, commit the sin, but we'd breathe a prayer to God and say, God, get that out of my mind. God, forgive me. God, clean me. I'm talking about a spiritual honeymoon. I'm talking about a first love experience. I'm talking about a newfound faith. Amen. I'm talking about behavior and conduct immediately following your conversion to Christ. Oh, there was no place like church. I mean, there was no place like church and there was no place like God's people and there was nobody like God's preachers amen and God's missionary oh friend I mean whatever the preacher said you did it whatever the preacher preached on you did it if it was surrender you surrender if it was getting right you got right oh you didn't carry grudges you didn't carry on you didn't have jealousy you didn't have an unforgiveness spirit. You wasn't mad at everybody. You wasn't stirred up in strife and division like some of you are now. Like some of you are now. How can a Christian live that way? How can a Christian keep going that way? Oh, friend, you remember when you first got saved? The Bible was so sweet. The Bible was precious. The Bible was real. The Bible thrilled your soul. The Bible was a wonderful book. Oh, friend, you read it every day. I said you read it every day. Oh, you took it to work with you. Oh, you slept with it right by your nightstand. The Bible was real. Somebody amen. I'm talking about, I'm talking about that first love. That first love experience. Amen. It was all so fresh. It was the love, Jeremiah said, of thy spousals. It was a responsive love for the Savior. 
It was a warmth of love to Jesus Christ in response to the presence of the Holy Spirit who lived within. This love of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, it constrained you. It dominated everything you did in life. And it overflowed to brotherly love to the saints. And then it moves out and embraces sinners. I like that. It also spills over into the assembly. And then, and I want to say something right here. And and I know I know some of you need this. And so I'm going to preach it, all right? I'm going to preach it. And we're not, we're not tiptoeing this morning. We're not squirting rose water this morning. I want to tell you, friend, I'm confident in some of your lives that when when you first got saved, you couldn't get enough of church. You couldn't get enough of church. Oh, you're going to be there for Sunday school. You're going to be there Sunday morning. You're going to be there Sunday night. You're going to be there Wednesday night. And you're going to find out, is there a meeting in the area? Is there a revival going on in the area? Is there a jubilee we can go to? Is there a camp meeting we can go to? And now, now, we're happy to see some of y'all one time a week. One time a week. And then you're late and you're dragging in and you don't care. And you forgot your Bible in the the, 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 the top of the car, what you, the, 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 whatever, part of the car or the back seat. And now Wednesday night, it don't matter anymore. A Sunday night don't matter anymore. Wednesday night don't matter anymore. Sunday school don't matter anymore. Tithing don't matter anymore. Staying out of fellowship with God's people, that don't matter anymore. It don't matter anymore, but it used to break your heart. It used to get next to you. You used to couldn't sleep. If you knew somebody had all in their heart towards you, you'd go get them in a church service. You'd get them by the head. I know what I'm talking about. You'd say, let's go pray. Let's go get a peanut butter and jelly salad. Let's go sit down at Shoney's. Let's make sure this is okay. I'm talking about a honeymoon, all right? Are you listening, Bryce? Are you listening, Morgan? They're still on their honeymoon. Are you listening? They're still on their honeymoon. The couple yesterday, they're on their honeymoon. Oh, friend, I mean, you can't get enough of each other. I said you can't get enough of each other. Uh, You listen to everything they say. Uh, You want to be in their company. I said you want to be in their company. You miss them when they're gone. Uh, You want to talk to them. You want to go to the restaurant with them. Uh, Don't get mad. You want to sleep with them. Uh, You want to be physical with them. That's exactly right. Don't get mad at me. You know it's the truth. Uh, You want to hug them. Uh, You want to kiss them. Uh, You want to hold their hand. Uh, You want to sit next to them. I'm talking about a honeymoon experience. Uh, Some of us has forgot about that. Uh, Some of that, that's in the past. And it's the same way spiritually. It's the same way spiritually. You used to be in the prayer room. You're not. I need a little bit more up here. I don't have a strong voice anymore. I, I'm sorry. I just don't. I used to, but I don't. I guess I've preached since I was 18, and I'm about to wear it out. Can you be patient with me? You, you never used to miss the prayer room. You never miss Sunday school. If you happen to be out of town, you double up on your tithe when you got back. I, I said you double up when you got back. Well, I tell you, I take another step. You left it with somebody before you ever went out of town. I know what I'm talking about. You left it. I can go see some of these sick people. Brother David, God's my witness. God is my witness. I go see some of these sick people that shut in. I don't go there for no tithe. I don't go, I don't never, I never bring it up. Believe me, I never bring it up. Never. I'm not that kind of preacher. I'm not there for their money. But invariably, Brother Randy, invariably, yep. preach it before you go. Before you go. Before you go. Y'all done took it all. Who took it all? Oh, God, we got a thief in the house. <laughs> but before you go, please put this in. Yes, sir. Before you go, please. I'm talking about senior citizens. I'm talking about shutting people. Yep. Preach it before you go. Put this in. Oh, you know how I've lived? Brother Rick, I've lived that before people ever go out of town, they drop it by the church office or drop it by. I've seen it. I've seen it. 
I've seen it. And now, now, they don't drop it by. They don't leave it with the church office. They don't send it in. And they just forget about it and go on two and three weeks at a time. Oh, where's your honeymoon out, Fred? Where's your honeymoon out, Fred? Does it not mean anything to you anymore? It's church not the grandest place that it's ever been. I want you to know I love church, amen. And God's people, my God, they're my crowd, amen. I know we got faults. I know we got shortcomings. I know we got problems. I know there's issues. Nobody knows it any better than I do. I know there's issues. But guess what? They're still my crowd. They're still my crowd. I thank God for my brother. I thank God for my sister. And I don't want to live another service. I don't want to live, live another day. I don't want to go another holiday out of fellowship with my brothers and sisters. And if I knew I was out of fellowship with somebody before the sun sets tonight, I'd make sure I did what I needed to do how to restore that fellowship. Amen. Amen. When you went on your physical honeymoon, when you went on your physical honeymoon, you talked to each other. You held each other. You held hands with each other. You sat by each other. You were sweet to each other. You whispered sweet nothings to each other. Don't get mad. You touched each other. I mean, you're supposed to. Either that or you're gay. Somebody say amen. And if you're gay, I wish you'd have never got married and messed somebody's life up. I said, if you're gay or lesbian, I wish, I know what's on YouTube. I wish you'd have never got married and messed somebody's life up. Married people are supposed to touch. Married people are supposed to be physical. Some of y'all is looking a little peaking. Some of you look a little blue around the gills. But these young couples, they're smiling. I'm not going to point them out. I'm not going to point them out. But they're smiling. I'm not going to point them out. I'm not going to bring any attention to them. But they're smiling like there's no more tomorrow. I'm not going to point them out. But anyway, they're smiling. Married people are supposed to be physical. I'm talking about your honeymoon. I'm talking about closeness. I'm talking about close living for closing hours. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Jefferson, I appreciate your steadfastness. I appreciate your, I appreciate your suppression of evil. I appreciate your stand against the neglected. I appreciate your service. I appreciate your labor. But Ephesus, Ephesus, I've got a charge against you, Ephesus. I've got a charge against you. You've left your first love. The passion's gone. The passion's gone. The passion's ebbing away. The fervency's gone. The zeal's gone. I've lived long enough, and I've pastored long enough, that if people wasn't going to make it to church, they'd call the pastor. Pastor, Jimmy's got 102. I am so sorry. We're not going to be able to make it. But as soon as Jimmy gets better, we'll be back, preacher. We'll be back. Preacher, just want you to know I'm on the side of 85. We've just had a little fender bender. I've got a flat tire. We were on our way, preacher. We were on our way. We got in this automobile accident. I am so sorry. I mean, you didn't apologize to me, but that's what they say. We intended to make it. We intended to be there, but the traffic jam, and by the way, that's a common thing on I-85. Uh, we can't make it. Uh, preacher, uh, uh, something's come up, an emergency situation. An emergency situation, we'll keep you posted. We're uh, headed up there to the regional, over here to Mary Black. Somebody, bad sin. Preacher, we, had, we were already dressed for church. We were coming. We were coming with the family, but we feel like we need to go on up there. Yes, sir, go on up there. I'll be there after church, the Lord willing, especially if it's this bad. Is everybody okay? But now it's not like that anymore. It's not like that anymore. I don't know if somebody's coming or going. I don't know if you're going to be here or if you're not going to be here. I don't know when we're going to see you again. I said, I don't even know when we're going to see you again. Oh, you've got so slack. You've got so slack. You've got so slack. Uh, hey, can I ask you something? Are you grieving your heavenly bridegroom? 
Are you grieving your heavenly bridegroom because you've lost, left your first love? You guys help me this morning, all right? Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. I said, are you grieving your heavenly bridegroom because your love for him has got less and less? Has your affections cooled? Has your affections cooled? Has your zeal disappeared? Where's your fervency? Where's your praise? Where's your cheer? You used to raise your hand in the choir. Now they're hanging down. You never smile anymore. You're not happy anymore. You've lost your shout. You've lost your amen. And let me go ahead and clear another echo of ground. By the help and good grace of God, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shout in the victory. The shout of the king in the Lord's camp. It'll always be welcome here. It'll always be welcome here. I didn't come to church to go to a funeral. I said, I didn't come to church to go to a funeral. I told a colored lady last night, and she agreed. She goes to a Baptist church, came to that wedding. I sat right next to her, talked to her a good while. I mean, back and forth. Several ladies, super, super nice. They all work with Daphne. And I said, I bet you go to a Baptist church. She said, we sure do. And I said, you're welcome to come over there. I said, we have amens and all that. We believe in being excited. And I told her, I said, ma'am, we don't go to church to go to a funeral. Amen. Some of you used to love that. You used to love that. And not only did you love it, but you participated in it. You participated in it. Oh, you were active. You were on fire. You were on fire. You were fervent. You were zealous. Your hands used. Hebrews talks about that. Lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. You know what that means? You stop praising and you stop praying. Oh, some of you wouldn't go a day without prayer. I know what I'm talking about. There are men in this building, when you first got saved, you carried your New Testament at lunch break. You didn't sit and chew the fat with a bunch of knuckleheads. You chewed the Word of God out in your truck by yourself because you couldn't get enough of it. And you even bowed your head at lunchtime and said, God, help me to be a bright light. Help me to be a witness, Lord. I know what I'm talking about by experience, by experience. I want that kind of life. I want that kind of life. I need, brother, I need that kind of life. I don't want to leave my first love. I want to still be on my honeymoon. I want church to be a wonderful place. I want God's people to be my crowd. I want the Word of God to be real. I want to have a time of prayer. I want to be intimate with the Lord. I want to walk with Him and talk with Him and fellowship with Him, brother Derry. I want to know communion and fellowship. I'm not even looking at my watch right now because I really don't care. I said I really don't don't care. That's another problem with us. We're so time constant. We can't even give God a half an hour in the sermon hour. God help us today. God help us today. Are you grieving your heavenly bridegroom? Have you left your first love? Are you cold? Are you indifferent? Maybe you should sing tonight with me. I said with me tonight. Maybe we should all sing that old song. How tedious and tasteless the hour when Jesus no longer I see sweet birds and sweet prospects and sweet flowers have all lost their sweetness to me. The midsummer sun shines but deal the fields strive in vain to look gay. But when I am happy in him, when I am happy in him, December's as pleasant as May. December's as pleasant as May. I first heard about that song, Miss Kathy Smith, at Camp Zion, Dr. B.R. Lake, and said, as a little boy, his mama would be in the kitchen singing, how tedious and tasteless the hours when Jesus no longer I see. He said, mama walk around with that long skirt, say, somebody say amen. I know that hung some of you, that long skirt, that old apron, that hung some more of you, them real cat head biscuits, that hung some more of you and tears coming down their face. B.R. Lakin, mama. If we had more B.R. Lakin, mama, we might have more B.R. Lakins. We might have Dr. Moore, Dr. B.R. Lakin. But she said, I want a fellowship with him, Miss Willis. I want to know his closest. And she'd walk through the house with tears in her eyes. How tedious and tasteless the hour. But he said, but, but when Jesus is real, Brother Clifford Biggerstaff, December's as pleasant as May. I've got someone against you. You've left your first love. We're 
We're going to load up at the bus parking lot. We're going to take a van over here to Calvary Baptist. We're going to take a, a youth choir bus. We're going to take a, a vehicle. We might just take vehicles, plural. We're walking over here to Brother McNeese or, or Brother 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 Mark Stroud or, or, or Brother Larry Brown or, or Brother Tim Fallor. Where are they? I want to go. I want to go. Where are they? Oh, they're up here in Inman or they're over here at Chesney or Chesney, <laughs> Sammy Allen over here at Chesney. They're up here at Gaffney. When you going? I'm going to, I'll tell you, i tell you, I'm going to rush on. I'm going to, I'm probably not even going to get to you. I'm going to be on that van. Oh, friend, that's how some of you used to live. That's how some of you used to live. That's how some of you used to live. You couldn't get enough of it. And now, and now, now, apparently you've had too much of it. It don't even matter. It don't matter. Help me, please help me. I need help. I'm lying sometimes. It's just, I think about all this stuff and about it gets the best of me. It really does. But would you, would you agree with me, preacher, brother, brother Randy, that most of the time it's the same crowd up here? Same crowd. We don't hardly ever have a new person go, do we? We're going to go to a baseball game. Oh, we can't. The line's too long. We're going to go eat. Oh, God. Oh, God. You, you, you put food out there, the whole church will come. <laughs> We're all going to wage. Oh, count me in. I'll be there if the church is buying. Count, you going to Taco Bell? Count me in. I'm in on that. tedious and tasteless the hours when Jesus no longer I see. Sweet birds and sweet prospects and sweet flowers have all lost their sweetness to me. The midsummer sun shines but dim. The fields strive in vain to look gay. I wish I could sing. I'm going to sing it one of these days. I swear I will swear I promise, commit, whatever, whatever I got, I'm going to sing it one of these days. But when I am happy in Jesus, December's as pleasant as May. Have you left your first love? Have you left your first love? Have you? He said, remember, repent, and repeat. Redo. Remember, repent, and repeat. Surely, there's more than a handful of us that have lived such a life that when the very thought of wrong, I said the thought, not the committing, the thought, the thought, Brother Trey, the very thought would enter our mind. We'd say, I want to shake your head. Say, mm -mm, no, 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 mm -mm, mm -mm, no, stop. No, get that out of my mind. God, take it away. Surely there's more than two handfuls of people that have lived that way. Surely, surely. Well, guess what? We, W-E, we, we, we need to get back to that. See if that song's in there. It's called How Tedious and Tasteless the Hour. Probably start to, probably under, somebody look for it, H. I hope it's in there. It's not in there, doggone it. Probably shouldn't have said that, should I? Rats, <laughs> rats. You young couples that are still on your honeymoon, you young couples that are still on your honeymoon, teach us old couples a lesson. Teach us old couples a lesson. You stay on your honeymoon. Stay on your honeymoon. I don't know what else to do except quit and let's pray. Hey, Ben, come up and pray with us, please. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Let's open the altars. Let's get a song. Brother Ben, pray with us. Lord, we love you this morning. Mm.
We confess it's not like we used to love you. God help me, Lord. God help me. We ask you, Lord, you'd help us in our heart, Lord, to submit ourselves to you wholly. God, to get back to that place where we were. Lord, bring the freshness, Lord, the newness back to us. God, no doubt in repetition, Lord, we get used to doing certain things. Lord, no doubt, Lord, we come to the same church, sing the same same songs. Lord, we're the same people. Shake hands with the same crowd. Lord, it's easy for us, Lord, to just get caught in the same rut of vain repetition, and we confess that this morning. We confess that we're not what we once once were. I ask you, God, you'd help us to draw closer to you. Lord, get back to our first love. I ask you, God, you'd draw us with cords of love. Thank you, Lord, that the goodness of God leadeth men to repentance. God, help us. I ask you, God, we'd repent this morning, and we'd get right with you. And, Lord, you'd, again, Lord, stir, stir the joy of the Lord in our hearts. Amen. God, remind us of the new song that you put in our mouth, even praising our God. And I ask you, God, this morning, Mr. Mount New Baptist Church, Lord, you help us to come before you, present ourselves to you. And, Lord, would you look at us, and, Lord, mm. Lord let us look at you. Mm. Help us to be honest with you. Lord, help us to not live in self-deceit and lie to ourselves. But, Lord, help us to remember. God, remind us. Lord, not to remember, but, Lord, help us to repent. And Lord, once we repent, help us to do the things, Lord, that you put in our hearts. That's the invitation, Lord. We need you, Lord, and I ask you, God, you'd speak to every heart. For those that are here that are lost and undone, that have no idea. No the idea. Of the Lord. No Lord, idea. The freshness of your relationship. I ask you, God, this morning, the conviction that's, Lord, pierced their heart. Smite them, Lord, in Holy Ghost conviction, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, they'd find their place at an altar. They'd get saved for it's eternally too late. Lord, we leave this invitation in your hands. We ask you to do your work for us in Christ. Now we ask it all. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Several have come. Several have already been. Several are here. Let's 327. Sing. sing it. Jesus is tender. 